talking to you about the fungus Aspergillus fumigatus. The genus Aspergillus was first catalogued, catalogued in 1729 by Italian priest and biologist Pierre Antonio Michelli. It is found in the phylum Escomycota. This phylum is known for sexual structures called sacs that form spores. When mammals breathe in the spores, it causes a deadly disease known as aspergillosis. Aspergillus fumigatus is classified in the kingdom of fungi, which is known for being eukaryotic and heterotrophic. They lack chloroplasts, and they store their food in the form of glycogen. They're in the phylum Ascomycota, which I said is known for producing sexual spores. The class Ascomycetes is also known for producing sexual spores. The order Eurotialis is known um, as the blue and green molds. It's in the family Trichocomacy, and in the genus Aspergillus, which is found in highly aerobic environments. And many fungus in this genus have a symbiotic relationship with an animals. Finally, the species is Aspergillus fumigatus, which is the most common pathogenic fungus in this genus and is known for causing aspergillosis, which I will discuss later. Aspergillus fumigalis can be found just about anywhere. It's said to be universal or ubiquitous. It's uh, mainly found in northern hemisphere during fall and winter or in the tropics all year round. Its primary habitat is in soil, decaying vegetation, and compost. It's found in um, on farms, in like grains, and in uh, the dirt and soil. Since it's a fungus, it does not need the sun, and it requires nutrients and moisture. It thrives in areas with high temperatures, above 104 degrees, areas with high oxygen levels, and areas with low water availability. So how does it get its nutrition? All fungi are heterotrophs. They get their nutrition from complex organic substances. They digest their material externally with the use of exoenzymes, which break down the substances so they can then ingest it. Um, they decompose decaying vegetation as their main nutrition source. And if they enter um, animal sources, they can use the tissues and break down those um, as their nutrients. It's believed that they reproduce asexually, or they do reproduce asexually. However, the recent evidence shows that they may reproduce sexually as well. However, that's not fully proven yet. Um, in the asexual cycle, the haploid hyphae form foot cells, which are basically diversions off the hyphae. Um, the tip of this foot cell will swell to form a conidiophore vesicle, which produces conidia through the process of mitotic budding. The conidia are haploid spores that get released and dispersed by environmental disturbances like the wind. The spores can then grow to become haploid mycelia. If the haploid mycelia come in contact with other haploid mycelia, foot cells are grown in the the asexual reproduction process will continue. So how do they adapt? Well, there's many ways the fungus has been able to adapt to ensure its survival. Um, since it thrives in areas of high temperatures, um, areas with lots of oxygen and low water availability, um, it is possible to survive in animals um, with warm um, body temperatures. They develop spores to resist harsh conditions. Um, this helps ensure their survival and disturbances in the soil, such as the wind, will allow the spores to, to be dispersed successfully. Um, 
they also have ad adaptations that allow them to survive in aerobic habitats like the lungs and nasal sinuses of animals. They also have changing hyphae, which um, they basically change during different stages in the life cycle and allow for further survival. The shape and the branching of the hyphae will change um, depending on whether the fungus is in an animal in an animal body or not. Aspergillosis is a disease caused by fungi of the genus Aspergillus. People with healthy immune systems are um, better able to combat this fungus, so complications normally occur um, in, in individuals with compromised immune systems, such as people with asthma, cystic fibrosis, HIV, or people with organ transplants. Animal species are also at risk, however, birds are more commonly affected. So how do you get infected? Well, first you need to breathe in the uh, fungal spores of an aspergillus. Aspergillus fumigatus is the most common fungus of this genus to cause aspergillosis. Since this fungus is found practically everywhere, most commonly in environments with soil or dust, people breathe it in every day. Now, rarely skin infections can occur due to uh, direct contact with the fungus. What symptoms should you watch out for? Well, once a spore colonizes um, a body, incubation times vary, so people will express symptoms um, at different times from when they um, were first exposed to the fungus. Many people develop symptoms like itchy eyes, a runny nose. Uh, people also complain of uh, stuffy nose, headaches, and chest pain, whereas some people <clears throat> are even asymptomatic. And in pulmonary aspergillosis, people can cough, wheeze, and uh, even cough up blood. What tests can you get done? Well, to, to get diagnosed, a doctor will perform uh, chest x-rays, CT scans, fungal cultures, um, an aspergillus antibody test, which detects the amount of aspergillus antigens in antibodies in the blood. Um, a tumor made up of aspergillus fungus will show up on the diagnostic images to allow for diagnosis. This tumor uh, normally occurs in an area where there is scarring from previous injury or previous infection or on the lungs or area where there's um, like cavities so the, the fungus can attach itself. Now, how to get treated for it? Uh, basically, people will get several weeks of an antifungal drug such as voriconazole or itraconazole. People can also be uh, taken off these, uh, taken off immunosuppressant drugs to allow their immune system to better handle the um, infection. A final option is surgery, but that's uh, apparently difficult for both the patient and the um, doctor. Prevention, prevention is difficult since the spore is found just about everywhere. It's not, it's basically not possible to prevent aspergillosis. People with weakened immune systems um, should avoid dusty environments, uh, they should avoid yard work, they can use filters and protective masks when possible. So as long as you have a healthy immune system, you should not uh, worry about complications with aspergillus fumigatus. Now this is a picture of a typical aspergillus fumigatus. Uh, you can see the stalk, um, which is known as a conidia four, and at the end of the conidia four is the conidia. Where the, uh, where the spores of the fungus are used for production. The distribution of these spores helps the fungus survive and travel to different areas. And that's my presentation. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed it. And here are my references.
Thanks again.